What is going on everybody? It's Stas here. Welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're going to be doing a quick trading update as well. What am I personally trading? What did I do today in terms of my trades? And we're also going to look at some other stocks and ETFs that I personally see potential in here towards the end of April, heading into the May month of 2019. But before we do get into all these different topics of today's video for everybody out there that finds value in these videos you enjoy the content here me breaking down stocks me talking about you know stock news the overall markets feel free to go down below and hit that like button it really supports me and supports the channel in general and if you enjoy this video and you're a new you know viewer consider subscribing later on in the video if you do enjoy the content so without further ado guys let's just hop right into it starting off with the S&P 500 like we do in every single video guys and today we finally hit that all-time high so last week on Friday we were about a dollar and three cents away from all-time highs in the SPX we can see today with that pop that we had earlier on in the morning we were up to 2949.52 which is a historical moment all-time high was set today on the 29th of April in 2019, we ended up closing the day on a bit of a downswing here. If we go to the one day, one minute, we can see that, you know, a little bit of a downswing, but we still ended up closing up $3.15, up 0.11% here at the close. In terms of the Dow Jones, very, very... um you know, minimal green day here, like just like the SPX guys, we were up 11 points here, up 0.04%. We had a nice uptrend for the entire day, then towards the latter half, really the end of the day, literally like the last 20 minutes, we ended up dumping and closing, still green, but it's just very, very, uh, you know, slight green day here for the uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average. Going over here to the NASDAQ guys, take a look at this dump that we saw at the close of the market. We saw it go from 78.57 all the way down to about 7,800. This one's down about 60 points to where we are right now. And this is the future, mind you. So this is tracking, you know, real time what it is, um, you know, right now. But at the close of the market, if we can see, you know, exactly where we were, we were roughly at about 78.54. So that was a pretty, was it a green day? Yeah, it seemed like it, we did close on a bit of a green day on the NASDAQ. NASDAQ, but the big drop here is a bit worrisome, and I'm going to be watching it tomorrow to see, are we going to keep this uptrend on the 50 SMA simple moving average, but we're going to be talking about that in a couple of minutes here. Let's just go back to the SPX very quickly. Honestly, guys, like I mentioned in the last video... You know, I thought that there was a 90-95% chance we were going to hit all-time highs on Monday, which is today. We clearly did that, and now that we did that, what we're looking at in terms of a new support level for the S&P 500 is really that old all-time high from back in October of 2018, where we were back in October roughly at about 2940. So the fact that we broke out of that today, we broke to an all-time high, now we need to maintain that level as a new support for this uptrend to continue, right? Let's say we pull back and break that level and we slowly start to sell off. The next support level we're going to be looking at for the SPX is going to be roughly 29.25, right? Or actually, no, the next one's going to be, if we zoom in a bit here, I know it's a bit hard to see, but if we zoom in, the next support level, if we break 29.40, again, the all-time high from back in October is going to be at about 29.35, which was a resistance from a couple of days ago. We obviously broke above that, making it a new support level, right? And if we break that level, we're going to be going down potentially to 29.25, which is the next support level. And at that point, we're going to be right on the 50 simple moving average support, which has been a support over the past couple of weeks. And if we judge off the 184 hour, the past couple of months, right, that level has been a strong support support. So just keep an eye here, guys. Remind you, the SPX is at all-time highs. Again, I can't really stress that. Uh, you know, I've already said it a couple of times here, but as we get higher and higher, as we continue to push up, the markets are getting more and more overextended, more and more overbought in terms of the relative strength index here. And that, in my personal opinion, is a bit worrisome, right? Because we could end up seeing a correction like we saw, you know, back 
during this time period here, right? We almost got a bit of a correction here, very minimal, but we ended up popping back up. So keep that in mind, right? Am I saying we're going to get a correction like this one here where we dropped 20%? Maybe that might come here in a couple of months, but I'm not saying that we're going to get that right this minute, right? But I do think there is a pretty good possibility that we get, let's say, a 2-3% correction, especially if the markets do get to that 3000 thousand dollar level um, in terms of the S&P 500 I do think we might sell off from there so the Dow Jones again not crazy in terms of what it ended up closing at today just up eleven dollars but it seems like we're still trading over the past like I've been saying over the past couple of days in between the level of 26200 right the support level or 26400 uh, rather and 26800 so we're in this four hundred dollar um, level now in terms of the Dow Jones. We popped up to 26,700 a couple of days ago. We sold off, retested that support right here at 26,400, which is a very good sign that we're continuing the uptrend at a higher low from the previous. And now we're just simply maintaining the trend, right? You guys see this trend that I've drawn out right here, the one that I'm outlining with my mouse right now. We're still maintaining that on the Dow, which is a good sign that the uptrend is still intact. So there's honestly not much to say right just keep an eye you know are we going to break out of 26700 where we got to a couple of days ago are we going to test 26800 right and if we break that level the dow jones is going to be at a one you know at a one stop shop to the all time highs right if we break that level you know that is the next level that we need to see before we get to those all-time highs. So that's what I'm looking at in terms of the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Now back to the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ last week was hitting all-time highs, it feels like, um, day in and day out, right? I don't think it was every single day that we hit an all-time high, but it was a couple of days in the, in the NASDAQ last week that we did hit all-time highs. We see it here at 78, 79.5. That's the all-time high for the NASDAQ. We pulled back a bit. We tested that 50 SMA at a higher low. We continued the uptrend. All was good. But now we're seeing a bit of a double top here on the NASDAQ, right? On the 25th of April, again, we hit that all-time high. We pulled back, right, later that day, or it might have been, yeah, later that day. We popped up up until the 29th of April, which is today. And then it seems like we hit that same resistance from the all-time high, and we formed a double top, right? Now we're selling off aggressively. So this, in terms of a double top, right, for those of you guys that don't know, a double top is a bearish pattern, right? When a stock ETF index or future has difficulty right breaking out of a resistance that forms a double top right and the fact that we're selling off aggressively here this tells me do, me doing my technical analysis right now that this double top is very valid so what I'm going to be looking for in the NASDAQ very simple here if we break the 50 simple moving average support here that's been a support over the past couple of months very clear to see that you know if we break that level that's going to really instill that double top and really confirm that it is a bearish pattern, especially if we slowly start to test 7,700. If we break that level and we slowly start to get back down to 7,600, you know, this is going to be very, um, you know, very worrisome, right, in terms of a bigger sell-off on the NASDAQ. But until we break that 50 SMA, and it seems like we are forming a bit of a green candlestick here, so this could honestly just pop up tomorrow. Who knows? But until we break this level, guys, the uptrend on the NASDAQ is still intact. So let's talk about what I did today in terms of my trading, so you guys that have been following the channel for the past couple of videos now, you know that I'm in a couple of swing trades. I'm in Procter & Gamble right now, which I pretty much just hold, held that one today. I didn't really add more to the position. We did see a bit of a sell-off in Procter & Gamble, which honestly, guys, was a bit expected due to the big run that we had this past week, right? If we look on the five-day, five-minute, you know, Procter & Gamble popped up a lot this past Friday, right? From 103 point six it hit 106 aftermarket hours so the big pop here honestly I wasn't expecting it to continue to run up into the 107s 108s this pullback in my opinion was very healthy right we're still maintaining a higher low in terms of the close from the previous close this is a good sign that the uptrend is still intact on Procter and Gamble not worried whatsoever and still holding this one with a target to sell roughly at about 108 to 109 
line. So that's a quick little swing update on Procter and Gamble. Facebook is another one, guys, that I ended up getting in on Thursday or Friday. It was last week, someday. I I'm in at about 193 ish, right around that level. So I'm up a bit on the position right now. We saw Facebook did very well today. One hundred and ninety four dollars and seventy eight cents at the close is what uh, the shares are priced at right now. We had nearly a two percent day, up three dollars and twenty nine cents. And in terms of technicals on Facebook, we have to draw or look at a bigger um time frame here, the one year, one day. So they reported earnings last week. For those of you guys that were paying attention, I'm sure you saw it. Stock went all the way up to nearly two hundred and three dollars per share, which just happens to be a resistance from back in June of two thousand and eighteen. Right, so we popped up there sold off back down to the 190 level, which just happens to be a support level from back in July of 2018. So pretty much what I'm seeing here, guys, and why I'm comfortable swinging Facebook and why I didn't cut losses um, when we dipped down to the 189 level, because it seems like we're maintaining this horizontal channel from 190-ish to 203, right? And for those of you guys that watched my video last week, I talked about how in Facebook, my plan is to add more to the position at about 195 ish dollars, right? We almost got there today. I want to see how the stock does tomorrow before I do add more money into it, but it's looking pretty good. The 50 SMA is being maintained as a support right now on the 20 day, one hour. After hours, we're seeing a green candlestick starting to form on top of that. Pretty good sign there in terms of Facebook. And in my eyes, guys, Facebook right now is simply a hold, and that's what I'm doing in terms terms of my swing trade position. So Apple, if you recalled from Friday's video, Apple is one that I was also in today, guys, and I ended up selling out of Apple on the morning spike, right? This is a weekend swing trade. I hopped in on Apple due to us maintaining the 180 or the 50 simple moving average support rather on the close of Friday's market. So I got in, I believe it was roughly, if we go to the one day or rather the five day, five minute, I believe I got in, I don't really remember exactly where I got in, but it was roughly the 204 level on Apple, right? And we saw a big pop up this morning, nearly up to 205 206, honestly. I think it almost did hit 206. If we look here a bit, yeah, it was over. It was about up to 205.97. And this was, in my opinion, an opportunity to just hop out very quick little profit on Apple on an overnight swing trade because earnings are tomorrow, actually, on Apple, the 30th of April. And I usually typically. Most of the time, 90-95% of the time, I don't hold through earnings because a lot of the time stocks go down 5-10% on earnings. Sometimes they go up 5-10% and I don't want to be caught on the negative side of that, right? I don't want to be an Apple if it goes down 5-10% and I get caught you know, with a big loss, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to do that qu to be quite frank with you all, right? So I just hopped in and out of this one quick weekend swing trade and we can see Apple's dipping very hard here after market hours. It's down to about 203. So I think I made the right decision here, guys. Who knows? The shares might pop up to 210 tomorrow. We don't really know when they report earnings. Of course, we will see what does end up happening, but I feel more comfortable just waiting until after earnings to get into Apple. And if you guys want to see a more in-depth video on me talking about trading during earnings and why you should be cautious, go check out the video I made a couple of videos ago. It's literally called Warning Trading During Earnings Season. Go check it out. It's a shorter video. It's about seven, eight minutes long. And I guarantee you guys will find a ton of value in that video. So in terms of my swings, guys, that's what really happened, right? Apple, Facebook, PG, sold out of Apple, still in Facebook, still in Procter and Gamble, right? So what I did today in terms of my day trading, and you saw in the title of today's video, which is going to segue into what I'm watching for the rest of this week and heading into the May month, is UWT, the crude oil ETF. And we talked about this one in my top 10 stocks that I'm looking to trade in May video that came out yesterday on Sunday, the 28th of April, right? We saw the big sell-off in crude oil, which obviously brought down UWT because whenever crude Crude oil is selling off. UWT is selling off whenever crude oil is going up. Uh, you know, UWT is going up as well. So why I 
found, you know, UWT attractive today because, again, we got the big pullback from about $24 all the way down to about, did it hit 19 I'm not too sure, to be completely honest with you all. Yes, we hit 1976 where we ended up maintaining the 180 simple moving average support here on the 184-hour chart, which just happens to be, you know, a support over the past couple of months, which is a very, very good sign here. And it honestly just opened up a very nice fat margin of profit. I believe it was around 15 to 20% on uwt and if we're going over here to crude oil guys let's see slash cl right let's take a look at what crude oil has been doing right we topped that about 67 dollars nearly we pulled down all the way to about 62 ish and we're maintaining the 180 simple moving average as well right we got uh, a couple bottoms here. We retested the support a couple of times, which is a very good sign. And now we're slowly starting to push up, continue the uptrend, right? And if we go to the one day, one minute, we can see exactly what I'm talking about here. We tested 62.46, and then this was at about 5.45 a.m. Eastern Standard. And from there, it was just a nice uptrend for the whole entire day, heading into the after hours right now. So I pretty much just got in and out of UWT today. Really, this was a bit of a longer day trade. I kind of held this one, you know, a bit. It was for about like two, three hours. I got in at about $20.56 on this third higher low, right? We pulled down at about 2037, popped up higher low, popped up higher low. And at that point, crude oil was continuing to push up very, very nicely. So I built in a smaller position. I'm not going to lie with you guys or to you guys. I didn't hop in with a very big position here but I got in with a reasonable size in in terms of my account right and I just held it for a little bit and I ended up taking a pretty solid gain right from $20 $20.58 roughly I ended up getting out at about $21 flat right we we broke the resistance from um the previous trading day at about 2094 uh, what was it like 2091 or something like that and then we ended up getting to $21 and at that point I already exceeded my goal of 1.5 to two percent in terms of my day trading so i ended up just taking the profits right and typically guys i'm not really holding uh inverse etfs overnight right because these are more volatile they can open up down five ten percent right and i've been burned that way so i'm typically just day trading these but i'm still keeping it on my radar for these next couple of days and this is going to segue into what i'm watching right uwt like you guys saw in the title this one is ready to pop in my personal opinion just take a look look at this pattern, right? Every time we've pulled back over the past couple of months, we've aggressively popped up to a higher high. Pullback, this one was a, a bit of a longer uh, time period in terms of the pullback, but we popped to higher highs, right? Pullback, pop, and now this is a massive pullback, and the fact that we're holding a higher low, this gives me you know, incentive to just trade in and out of UWT over the next couple of days, right? The RSI is very oversold, right? It's starting to curl back up. It's starting to pop back up. That's looking very good as well. And I'm just keeping an eye on it, right? The next spot we need to break out of where it seems like there's a bit of a resistance right now is roughly $21.20, right? If we go to the one day, one minute, I think that's where we topped off today. Yup, there was a bit of a strong resistance at $21.20, and that was an old support support from a couple of trading days ago right here. So that is why it's struggling to get out of there. It was an old um support. We broke beneath it. Obviously, it's a new resistance now. And if we break that level, guys, I can see us definitely hitting $22. And at that point, we need to break out of the 50 simple moving average level of resistance. And from there, I can see this popping up to another higher high, right? But just keep an eye on crude oil. I'm not 100% certain. Nobody out there is 100% certain that a trade is going to go exactly as planned. So just keep an eye on crude oil, right? This could be um, a complete fake out. Let's say crude oil ends up tanking tomorrow. You know, we end up breaking that 180 simple moving average support, which if we do break that, I'm not going to be looking to trade crude oil or UWT. You know, that's a level to keep an eye on, right? If we break this level to the downside, that's going to be a bit worrisome on crude oil and of course on UWT. So let's just go over 
a couple of stocks very quickly. We honestly already talked about them, right? Facebook is one that I'm watching. I already did my breakdown on Facebook. Apple, they're reporting earnings tomorrow. I kind of already broke that one down. If we end up popping up, you know, after earnings, that one's going to be a very good trade in my personal opinion. We have advanced micro devices. AMD's also reporting earnings. It's still stuck in this horizontal channel from $27 to $28. So hopefully earnings ends up popping it up, making it pick a direction to the upside or the downside. But ideally here, guys, I think I mentioned this in one of the previous videos. I hope AMD does end up falling on earnings on a good earnings report, kind of like a situation with Procter & Gamble. They had a pretty solid earnings report, but they ended up falling. I hope it does end up falling to the 26th level and for it to test this 180 SMA just to get in on a better entry on AMD. That would be ideal in my personal opinion. So I'm watching AMD. Let me just double check that they didn't push their earnings back. Yup, tomorrow is earnings 4.30 uh, p.m. Central Standard Time on the 30th of April. I'm watching that one. Another one that's reporting earnings tomorrow, guys, is McDonald's, right? McDonald's before the market, Central Standard Time tomorrow. And this is one that we don't really talk about that much on the channel, but I honestly hope McDonald's ends up tanking soon so I can end up adding more to my overall um, long-term position because McDonald's is a stock that I have in my long-term portfolio. I do like periodically adding into this one for the dividend income for the uh, you know more of a stabilized position here over the long term. I like adding in on dips like this, for example, this, for example, because over time, if we're just judging on McDonald's long term chart, you know, it's dipped multiple times where if we look on the long term chart, those were good buying opportunities, right? So I hope we do end up dipping maybe back down to the 160s, 150s. That's probably not going to happen on one earnings report. That's most likely going to happen if we see a big correction in the overall stock market. So I'm just keeping an eye on that for a potential uh, pullback, right? And if we, if we pull back, you know, maybe we get to the 50 SMA, it could be a short-term trade, right? So Tesla today actually did very well in terms of a percentage, still very, um, in terms of uh, the pattern here, still a very bearish pattern, not reversing to the upside uh, quite yet, but we hit lows of, let's see today on the one day, one minute, we hit lows of 232 up to 244. So that was a $12 margin today. So if you were able to day trade Tesla, let me know down below in the comment section. That seemed to be a pretty good move today. So keep an eye on Tesla, guys. Maybe this one rallies back up to the 50 SMA since it's been so battered down. This one could end up being a pretty solid potential play, right? And one more I want to talk about. This is kind of a more speculative stock. For those of you guys that don't remember, I'm in this one from a couple of months ago, weeks ago. I forget exactly when I ended up buying it. I bought in though. I know the price. It was around 530 to 540 and this one was NEO, right? And if you guys watched my video a couple of weeks ago when I did make that video, I was talking about how I kind of just want to put a very small sum of money in NEO that I'm willing to lose as a speculative long-term trade swing trade um roughly at five dollars and forty cents to see if i can maybe double that money kind of just like a, a a point in time where i'm kind of just throwing money into a spec play i don't really do this but for fun guys you know i like having some um fun sometimes if that makes any sense with some of these trades right i like taking some more risks usually i'm not taking insane risks right but this is probably the riskiest trade that i'm currently in or that i've taken over the past couple of months to be completely honest with you guys but i'm in with an amount of of 500 ish dollars something like that 550 maybe 600 i forget exactly but i'm in with an amount that i'm 100 willing to lose right if that money were to poof i wouldn't even notice it right i would not even notice it to be completely honest with you guys but we're seeing a bit of a reversal here a start of a reversal on NEO, if we can look on the 20 day, it's actually been reversing quite nicely, right? We hit 560, pulled back to 440, the bearish cross. 50 SMA was acting as a resistance, right? We hit the bottom, but now we started to reverse to the upside, right? We hit above the 50 SMA resistance. We're maintaining it as a support now. The 50 SMA is crossing above the 180, which is a bullish move. And now we're starting to trek back into the $5 range. So this is pretty good for NEO. Worth watching if you guys are into some, you know, lower, uh, you know, lower price stocks. 
penny stocks, whatever you guys want to call this, you know, keep an eye on it. I think it can pop very, very soon. We will see. So that's going to be it for today's video. If you enjoyed the video today, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. Again, it really supports me and supports the channel in general. And if you want to leave a comment down below, let me know how you did. I would love to chat with you down below in the comment section. Also, again, if you're new to the channel, feel free to subscribe. I post here daily stock market investing news my outlook on the market, personal finance. That is what this channel is about. So subscribe, hit that notification bell so you're notified every time that I do make a video. I'll catch you all in the next video. I hope you all did great today. I hope you all have a great night. Peace out. Thanks for watching. It means a lot. I'll catch you all in the next video.